Okay, so good morning, everyone. Those of you who are here at the Hoboken Public Library, welcome back to in person. Those of you at home, I'm hoping you can hear and see me. I want to start out on this great Wednesday morning by thanking the Hoboken Public Library for allowing us to have this class, which I think we're calling now Art with Liz, since it is hybrid, we're no longer calling it Art at Home. But thank you to the Hoboken Library for allowing us to remain creative during this time of COVID and the pandemic and enabling some of us to work in the comfort of our home, isolating and staying protected. And for those of us who can come in person to be here together. We are still in June. We are celebrating both Gay Pride Month and Caribbean American History Month. And we are on our third Caribbean American artist today. We will talk briefly about his life and career and then look closely at some of the images of his work. And then I will give you an assignment inspired by what he does. Those of you at home, you will be able to do your work in your own personal workspace. And those of you here, obviously, you have plenty of room at the library in which to work. I want to point out to those of you who are here in person, we do have a little questionnaire, a feedback form for you to fill in. If you could take a moment to do that at some point during the class, we have the feedback form because it's really helpful to us teachers to know what you're thinking about the class and how it's going. And if you have any suggestions for us to improve or ideas for other classes that we could hold we would really be grateful to hear about them. All right, let's start talking about Nari Ward. He is our artist for today. I'm going to share the screen. It says, Laura, that I have disabled the screen sharing. So if you could give me a little technical assistance on how to restart the screen sharing. Now it still says it's disabled. Morning, tomorrow, welcome. Yes, excellent. Thank you, Laura. We have the great librarian, Laura Natal here, helping us with technical assistance. Thank you so much. I think this is the image I want. Yes. Okay, so I'm putting up on the screen. Those of you here and at home, I think you can see this. Could someone at home just indicate that you can see it? You can just say yes, anyone? Yes, I can see it. Awesome, thank you. I think that was Stephanie. Thank you so much. Okay, so again, our artist for today is Nari Ward. He is a Jamaican American artist. He was born and raised in St. Andrew, Jamaica in 1963. He now lives and works in New York City. He is the head of the studio art program at Hunter College in New York City and is also a professor of art at Hunter College. I mean, that alone right there gives you a sense of how incredibly talented he is and how prestigious his career is. He is primarily um, an installation artist. He uses found objects and the concepts that he deals with are related to 
consumer culture, poverty, and issues of race. He's earned several awards, including the Rome Prize in 2012. Again, he was born in Jamaica in 1963. He came to the United States at the very young age of 12. It was immediately apparent that he was a talented artist. He had a gift for drawing, but his parents really didn't understand what it meant to be an artist. And so he grew up with this stereotypical idea that artists were all crazy, wild people. And because of that, his parents directed him to become a graphic illustrator as opposed to a fine artist. So he went to school for advertising, but while there he realized that that was the wrong pathway for him. And he started studying fine art at Hunter College and then got his master of fine arts at Brooklyn College at CUNY in 1992. In 2011, he became a US citizen and his career was launched. He has been in several Whitney Biennials. I've been lucky enough to see his work in person at the Whitney Biennial in New York. He's also shown at Documenta in Germany. that you look in the New York Times if you're interested in finding out more about that. He's shown his work in Boston, New York, Minneapolis, Detroit. So he has had quite a career thus far. He had a solo exhibition at the Massachusetts Museum of Contemporary Art and at which he investigated transformative spaces that straddle the division between leisure and work. So this whole idea about class, class structure, poverty and race, these are the concepts that really consume him. All right, let's look at some of his pieces. Anyone in the audience, whether in person or at home, please feel free to add comments or talk about his life. If you know more about him than I do, please share information. If you've done some research or you know about his career and life, please share. So this is the piece I was lucky enough to see at one of the Whitney Biennial shows. Let's see. Someone at home, can you see this on your screen? Blurry. Blurry. Yes. It's blurry, it's blurry here too, this is, Always the problem with digital images, when, right. you, when you enlarge them, they get very, very blurry. So, but obviously this has a message. It says, we the people. And it is made from, if I'm remembering correctly, just strips of things that he's found on the street, old bits of fabric and plastic just detritus and garbage that he's found laying on the street. And boy, it packed an impact. It carried an impact. When I saw it, I saw it from a distance. When I walked into the room in which it was displayed, it's very large. And it really hit me in the gut when I first saw it. Any of you here saw this? I, I've seen pieces in, in, um, in the South. It is, it's very impactful. And it's much, it's much more colorful than it appears. Right. It's very, very, very colorful. The materials that he uses are very bright. Thank you, Lily, for bringing that up. It doesn't show in this photograph at all, unfortunately. 
e etc. The, um, I think it's the reflection of the piece. But isn't that cool that it looks like people? That's really observant. People at home, I'm going to put my cursor. Do you see what Heather is talking about here? Yes, the floor. I don't know. Those of you who've been to the Whitney, the floor looks like glass in there all the time. They really polish the floors to a high shine. And I do remember the reflection from this, this piece in the floor. It does look like people. How cool is that? I wonder if he knew that when he made this yeah, installation. No, that's reflection. It's a reflection in the floor. It does look like you could actually touch it and feel something three dimensional. But it. No, no, that's the floor, and that's a reflection in the shiny surface of the floor. Sure. It looks like he sewed it into the wall. That was another crazy thing, too. Right. It looks like it's actually coming out of the wall, not that it's stuck on the wall, but it looks like it's growing like it's an organic thing, like a plant that's actually growing out of the wall. Thank you, Lily. And I don't know how he achieved that. They must have let him drill lots of little holes in the wall. Oh, good, yeah. Somebody said something in the chat. Thank you, Jane. Put a link in the installation for those of you who want more. This is about this particular piece, Jane? Yes, it's showing the installation and a little bit about the, talks about the fact that these are the very most important words in the constitution. Awesome. Thank you, Jane. And I would agree, we the people, the foundation of this country. Pretty prophetic coming off the Juneteenth, the second annual Juneteenth celebration that we just had to. Thank you. All right, so let's look at another one of his pieces. Look at this baby next. I have never seen this one in person, but boy, I sure would like to. So again, this is, looks like a birdhouse, right? But obviously it's larger than life and it's made out of junk and garbage. So a commentary on how, hi Sally, welcome. How garbage can be beautiful. That's one of the things he's trying to say. It is reminiscent to me also of slave cabins. So this could be talking about race, could be talking about poverty. Pretty awesome, I think. Reminds me of the artist we looked at last week, Nguyen Smith and his bundle houses. I wonder if they know each other. That would be cool to find out. All right, I'll move on if no one has a comment.
So again, this is very blurry and difficult to see, but I wanted you to see the size of his work. Again, this is very large. And the fact that he'll use anything. I mean, these look like old sticks, old bits of wood and maybe cardboard. There's netting here that I'm guessing he's created out of things that he's found and woven together. And there is a large object suspended in the middle of this net. Unfortunately, it's difficult to tell what it is. I think it's really beautiful. Esty. No, they, I think they are figurative. I think they're supposed to suggest people, but they're like sticks and bits of paper and things that he's just bundled up and put underneath the large net. There's also plants that I think are growing. You know, they're living. His, his imagery is all about race and poverty. And those are the issues that he works on. Look at the beautiful shadows here as well. I think there are parts of this piece that are hidden from our view on the back side of this that are definitely figures. Shadows really play an important role in his work. I feel as if the, whatever this is, it, it may be a figure, but it's definitely wrapped up and constrained. It feels like a captive to me. Anyone else have comments about this? Yeah, it, it feels definitely like a captive and it feels ominous. It feels like the, the what's below it could burst into flames uh, or it could be dropped into it and somehow it's um, a captive and it's being threatened in my view, uh, as beautiful as it is. Um, that there's something going on there between the figure being enclosed and what's below it, which could be, be anything, but it feels like it's, it's dangerous, say, if it were to drop down or if what's below would be uh, lit up. <laughs> Thank you, Robin. Yep, it does look like it could be a fire. Yes. As always, I invite everyone to read more about his work. I did skim over. There is more information about his work on Wikipedia and Artsy is another great place to look for information about Nari Ward. But it does feel like this is a figure that's been captured and constrained. But that's an interesting point. That never even occurred to me until you mentioned it, Robin, that this could be some kind of bonfire arrangement. Okay. Waiting to be lit. I don't know that I see it as lit now, but that it's, it's threatening that it could be lit. Okay, to, um, which is also awful. I know I have read accounts of people who've been lynched and then set on fire. So it could be referential to that as well. Awful. But his work definitely has a political message. All right, we'll look at a few more. 
And I am not going to ask people to do work with a political message today unless you feel so moved. Um, wait, what have I done? Liz? Yes. So I just wanted to add that uh, We the People and the other uh, message oriented pieces um, are done in shoelaces. Oh, okay, right. Thank you. That's interesting. That I didn't remember. Completely in shoelaces? Yeah, that's what it says. And he's done other installations, like one uh, with the verb pouvoir. Um, so apparently it's, you know, a medium he, he likes and he uses multicolor laces. So I don't know where he gets them. Cool. Without your shoes, you're powerless too, right? You can't run without your shoes. So taking shoelaces definitely has a strong message as well. Pouvoir is the French word for power. For can, yeah, for a, um, able. Also to be able to, yeah. So these are, I feel, figurative installations pieces. These look like they're made from paper to me. And they are part of the We the People installation. And Heather, you can really see the reflection now of the piece in the floor. All right. So a lot to think about as far as the political message of his work. I personally also find his work beautiful visually. I love the textural quality. I love it. the fact that there's sculpture that you can walk around. Uh, you're unable to touch these, unfortunately, but I love the texture. All right, so we have a lot to think about. What I'm inviting folks to do today, however, is to revisit some of our skills. I feel like for the last couple of months, we've been removed from skill work that is so important to our practice. And today I'd like us to revisit some of our drawing skills those of you at home, I'm inviting you to look for maybe five to 10 interesting objects that you have around your home. And the more complicated and intricate the objects are, the better they will be for this assignment. And take them and put them into a mini still life. And I want you to draw the still life. Start first in pencil and then if you have time or if you're feeling so inclined, start working in color. So we're being inspired by Nari Ward's use of found objects. You're going to be using found objects from within your home or personal studio to work from. Folks here at the library, I brought in a lot of objects from you to choose from. I don't know if you can each take 10. I don't think I brought enough for everybody to do that. But if you could take from three to four objects and make a mini still life, you could even look inside your own bags or purses and find things to draw. Look for complex things. The more complicated the object is, that you draw, the more engaged the visual side, the right side of your brain will become. And it seems counterintuitive, 
but the easier it will be for you to draw accurately and for those of you who want draw realistically any questions about today's assignment we have a nice long chunk of time to do these drawings i'm going to stop slightly earlier today for sharing because I know frequently people have appointments that they have to go to near the end of class, and I want to give everyone an opportunity to share who wants to. All right, let's gather up our stuff. You can always put in the chat box any comments or questions that you have, those of you who are at home. And we are now going to switch to another camera so that I can work with the people here and also everyone at home at the same time. Yay. And I'm actually starting to feel a little bit warm. So those of you at home are going to get to see my fantastic blouse. I'm so thrilled. I'm going to stand by my laptop, though, for a couple of minutes to see if you have any questions in the chat. All of the objects that you can use folks here in the library are on the window ledge at the back. There's paper. There's all different kinds of drawing equipment. I invite you to use new media if you'd like. There's charcoal today. If you do use charcoal, please be sensitive to the fact that we don't want to leave a mess in the library. So. If you use charcoal, maybe make, take some extra paper and make a tablecloth on your pot. Just a reminder, folks at home, I'm going to keep checking the chat. And Laura always is good about that, reminding me to check the chat. You all can hear me, right? Somebody give me a thumbs up. Shane, give me a thumbs up if you can hear. Shane, can you hear me? Remember, your mic is over there, so you have to talk. Yeah, they got a thumbs up. You got a thumbs up, Liz. Oh, okay, good. Okay. I want you to do more than one thing at a time. So let's put them together. So start with the loop. Yeah. 
One, two, three. Yeah, I would like it. So another option, folks at home, you can do this too. You might want to do some rough draft sketches first. Do some quick rough sketches first. Discard them and then at a certain point, start the finished one. Give yourself 15, 20 minutes. Say you could do your quick sketches. And then say around maybe 11 o'clock, you can start doing a finished one. So Sally, you could do the finished one. That is that. That's this normal. haven't practiced our close-up observational skills in a while, please give yourself a little breathing room. Try and avoid the negative commentary, self-chat. Don't do that negative self-chat stuff. Your first few sketches might not be very good. That's okay. You're warming up. It's a perfect setup for a model. I'm just realizing the Florida. We got the big screen. Yeah, we have lots of time. So do those warm up drawings first if you feel a need. Drawings, just like, I don't know, learning how to water ski, you have to practice. Wow. Thank you. 
sensation. The mind wanders. But you bring it back. When you're drawing, start feeling your mind go, oh, this doesn't look right, or I can't do this. Stop that and just become visual. And refocus on what you're looking at. Forget about how the drawing looks. Focus on what you're looking at. That's what matters. You've done a good warm up. Then you can get out and get the mind where you can really look at the detail. Check the chat box. Oh, somebody in the chat. It's starting to get cold again. Of you at home, I'm just wandering around, looking at what people are doing. Just let a 
miss the field that you folks at home, you miss out on this part of the teaching process. Yeah. You really did get this kind of attention. Even if you were to hold your work up to the camera, you could. it's difficult for me to see what you're doing. But if you would like to do that, just let me know in the chat. Got the chat open, and if you want to hold up one of your pictures, you can just let me know. I'm going to go off camera because I like walking around. Liz, did I hear you say Teresa was there? Yes, you know, we've had we've had two Teresas over the year. This is young Teresa. Wow. Okay. <laughs> this is not sitting Teresa. This is our teacher Teresa. Okay. I thought I thought the uh, knitter was there. Come on, hey, 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 stop it. I've not seen in a long time. The people are being out right now. So I'll let you know if she returns. Okay, thanks. Well, this is terrific. Laura, moving with the webcam. <laughs> Our tech genius. Let's see more of the class as well as me. Yeah. So this is this is our beloved teaching Teresa. He our schools out. She's able to be back. Oh, well, nice to meet you. <laughs> Good to be here.
Anybody at home want to show your work? Let me know. I can show you something that's a work in progress, but it's not. Yes, Margo, hold it up. How do hey. I... uh, let me start my video. All right. See it? I have to see if I can spotlight you. Okay. Yes, there we go. Wow. It's kind of hard in here. Or, and you're, you're looking at actual feathers? Uh, I'm creating actual feathers. I, I don't have anything to look at. Um, I'm, I'm going to uh, be cranky with you. This is beautiful. But the assignment you. today was to look at real things. Yeah, well, I didn't have real feathers, but this is <laughs> this is what I. All right. Am. Well, I forgive you because it's beautiful. Keep going. Yeah, I want to do one more you feather. Might, you might want to reference some images. Go to Google and look at feathers. Although, maybe not. I leave that up to you because this is really nice the way it is. Thank you. Okay. Maybe a little bit of washi wash in the background, something pale. Okay. But very well, pale, thin wash. Great job. All right, keep going. Okay, so that does work if you want to share during class. Um, It is, I mean, my only other problem with it is it can be distracting for folks. No, but I mean move in terms of the skill Oh, thank you. Now I don't know how to get back to the camera though, Laura. Where am I? Where am I? Here, oh, here's the library, okay. You spoke too soon, Lily. Shadow. 
Okay.
Okay, anyone else at home want to share? Oh. <laughs> I'm going to scroll through the participants. See how everybody's doing. We seem to have lost our at home people. No, there are 11 people. How come? Are they all off camera? That must be. Okay. Wow, so we have a big group today, Laura. Yeah. Interesting people styles. Somebody dress them up. That's the way the my life is turned straight. I'm going to go big. Large. Yeah. 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 Oh, That's I know that I, I know. I and they're sometimes I'm going to make you get out of your comfort zone, but mm -hmm. today, no. Just keep going. We haven't drawn in a long time. Want you to really focus on your skills and your abilities today. You gotta feel good.
Hi, Liz. Yes, Shirley. What's your work? Uh, Where are you? Liz, I have to go. Can I send you a very rough sketch? Absolutely. Okay, thank you, Liz. I'm sorry you have to go. I'm delighted you came. Good luck with the plumber. <laughs> Not yet. I have to find one, but my brother tried to fix it. He's coming. Can you see it? Oh, are you holding up your art? Wait up. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Okay. All um, right. I got it. Right. It's just, just a rough one, okay? Oh yeah. Uh -oh. oh, terrific. Is, is it a dog? No, it isn't a dog. It's a fan and a, a round object. I found it at home. I showed you where the, what it looked like, okay? Yes. Okay, just give me one second. Show the object. Oh, wow. That's a fan. And yeah. the other one? Show the drawing again. Hey, that's the other one. Oh, wow, a globe. Oh, with a globe. How pretty is that? So show you. I've got two. I'm not finished yet. Just, you know, let you know. That's all right. Show, sh show your drawing again. Thank you. Well done. Show your drawing again. Oh, okay. Very cool. Oh, now I see the snow globe in front of the fan. Yeah, work on the shadows in the fold, which is yeah. the most difficult part, but this is- uh, Okay, um, because it's not completed, I'm just a rough, very, very rough one. It's just a quick sketch, that's all. You can see that it's a work in progress and it's a great beginning. Thank you. Hi, Shirley. All right, bye. Bye. Bye, bye. bye Lily. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Hey, Shirley. Bye, Shirley. Bye, bye now. Oh, we got plenty of time. Hey, Liz. Liz. Who's that picture of Jane? Jane. Jane. All right. <laughs> What's happening, Jane? Hi, Liz. Hi. Um, I'm going to have to leave shortly as well, but I, I had a quick question for you. About the piece I was working on yesterday, um, I feel it's get you on camera. Hold on. Okay. Actually, I can bring the piece if that helps. Hang on, I'll be right back. Yes, please. Oh, she's not on camera. She went to get her piece. Yes.
Okay. So you have to turn your camera on, please, Jane. Oh, yes, of course. Sorry. Good. So I'm getting really close. Um, but yesterday I encountered a problem. I, so I'm wondering, like, I have to go inside where I've glued the edges, but I need to somehow get inside to glue this section down. It's not glued properly. So I was thinking maybe I would cut the back and then glue a new piece more carefully. Do you have any thoughts on that? Do it very carefully. Yeah, I mean, I don't quite know how to. Because this is all glued with the, um, like the Elmer's white glue. I was wondering whether I could somehow pry it. I mean, it's sort of partially open, but if I, if I added some water, would it, un would it, would it unstick? Unstick? It's a solid piece. Um, so there, the back is one solid piece that I've glued this whole section on to. And it's a combination of newsprint and other materials. So I have to be really careful with the newsprint. But the part that you want to try and lift up. Right. Is on one piece. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, well, it's it's layers. But the part that is not sticking is that one piece of white paper. No, it's it's this whole section here. So the various different materials. Well, I didn't get enough glue in there. I need to do like a really good job of gluing it once I get it open. So I guess I just have to experiment and try to peel it back and see if I, I mean, I just need to be able to get in there and slather some paste and then press it. Yeah, I would start with one tiny section. Yeah. And then I would get the Elmer's in one of the fine tip bottles. Right, right. Or I was even thinking of a letter opener to like, you know, slide it in there and and uh, put a thin layer. Yeah, just do All it right. very slowly and very carefully. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. A brush, perhaps a thin brush, paintbrush to apply. Yeah. Glue. The main thing is to get in there. I don't know yet how I'm going to get in. Once I get in, then that Did won't be too bad. It? What? You could try steaming it. Yes. So I'm going to try some fluids and see if I can. I think if I lift from the bottom, it's going to have a best, the best result. I have to work on it. All right. Anyway, thank you. I, you I have, enjoyed the class today. If you have a tea kettle. Yeah. You could create a, um, you know, a stream of steam. Yeah. Yeah. And just hold the piece near the steam. See if that loosens it a little before you slide the letter opener under. Right, right. All right. Thanks, Liz. Good luck. I'm sorry that happened. All right, thank you for coming today. Good luck. I wanna see that finished. You are gonna be successful. I know. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right, see you soon. And Bye. Thank, you, thank you for coming. Bye, Jane. All right. Liz, uh, this is Robin. Hi, Robin. Hi. I, I created a still life, which was sort of interesting. Uh, and the drawing is a little weird. But anyway, I, I've just... Uh, uh, inked it, uh, and I just wanted to show it to you. I never get to finish things in your class, I always, but I'm starting to work 
outside of class to finish some things. But anyway, I don't know if I can, if, if I am, you can see that. I can see you. Beautiful. You Hold up the drawing. Wait a second. Uh, this, this is, well, it fell apart. Can you see that on the table? There's two pieces of pottery. Or are you yeah. just seeing, can you see that? Yep. Okay. Yep. So then this is the drawing. Nice. And I was going to do, use watercolors, but it doesn't feel complete or it doesn't feel like it really holds together. These are leaves uh, that I picked up in the fall. This is a pinch pot by a guy in Vermont years ago. And this is a pot that my son did when he studied with that teacher when he was around eight years old. Uh, so I always love these two pots, but um, I don't I don't know that this is really together. Do you know what I mean? I feel a need. I think that this is a brilliant drawing, but I want to see something in the bottom right. Okay. So how can I do this so you can see? Let me see. Oh, no, don't. No, hold the picture back. Oh, keep the picture there. Okay. I want to I wish there was a way I could point the picture. But I'm going to. Use the cursor. Can you see the cursor, Kevin? I'm confused about how to do this, but where where are we? Hi. You how to do this. Where, where are we? No, you don't you don't have to move. You're perfect where you are. But the bottom right of this picture needs a little something something. Okay. One more leaf or a tiny pot here. Something to tie the whole composition together, but this this corner is empty, and it it needs something. Okay, that's that's a big help. Thanks, Liz. Yeah, I like I like the fluidity of your line. It's it's really a beautiful drawing. Oh, thank you, Liz. Just thank add you. one more thing. Okay, and can I just? show you what I did with the painting from last week. Absolutely. Um, because I never, very rarely get to finish anything. I, I, it's weird, but hold on a second. It was about the houses. Um, you know, leaving I know houses. houses. Wow, this is cool. Leaving home. So there were three houses. This is the summer place. This was yes, where yes. I remember they sold the house without telling you. Yeah, and, and and then we moved over here by selling that house. My parents didn't have money. I have no idea how they did all this stuff. But anyway, this is what I ended up with. And I think it's um, I don't know if it works as a painting, but it was an interesting process nonetheless. Of uh, it works definitely as a painting. Here's a suggestion. I you can opt out as always with my suggestion. I would take some kind of fine point black marker. Okay. And do some fine outlining and some detail, some textural oh. detail things. Okay. It's okay. beautiful. It's really beautiful color choices. And the tree in the foreground. Yep, I like the large tree in the front. I like the way the tree kind of obscures everything. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> well, the tree was really the most important part of it all, but since it was about houses and everything, it, it just came out this way. But I'm gonna follow what you're suggesting. Thank you. Something um, really fine point. Okay, I got it. Something thin and delicate. See how that um, looks? I would start in one small spot and let it grow. See how it looks. Okay. Cool. Thank you for sharing. Thanks, Liz. Awesome, Robin. Liz is friends. Hi. 
Hello. Oh, this is cool. See, but I worry about, well, we'll talk. Okay. Show me what you're doing, Franz Okay. <laughs> so I don't know if you can see. It's very pale, but I can see. Uh, it's just a sketch. So I will, I will put some call, some fine pen. So it's just random objects that was in front of me. I like the relationship between the shapes. I like the way you're having them relate to each other and touch. This is a very interesting composition. I like the variety you have in size and shape. This is going to be great. Okay. I'll try to advance so I can show more. <laughs> I'll try to advance so I can show more. <laughs> Yeah, but when you've made more progress and it's easier for us to see, show again, okay? Yes. It's a great beginning. Thank you. Oh, to be young. I want three nails on one hand and black nails on the other. So cool. Well done, Franz Keep going. Okay, so awesome. Nice. The layout and composition are great. All right. Hey, Liz. Vanessa. <laughs> oh, Sally is so happy. <laughs> He's drawing Sally. I don't know if you could see my my little setup here. That's my still light. Oh, cool. What are the red thingies? This is actually this. Yeah. yeah, that's a lighter. <laughs> a so lighter. it's actually a lighter in there, but it's like got a little wrap, like a leather wrap around it. So it's like these little leather fringes. Wow. That's so cool. then there's And then there's a smudge stick here. Huh. <laughs> Did you so buy it in the 1960s? You probably weren't even born yet. <laughs> No, but I wish I did. <laughs> it looks very kind of hippie. Yeah, definitely. Fringe, fringy hippie. <laughs> All right, it's a cool still life. Let's see what you're drawing. So this is my drawing. Can you bring it in closer to the camera? Because your lines are still. Darn, it's kind of tough to see it. Yeah, if you could angle it down a bit because of the glare. Yeah, that's better. It's a great beginning. I love the face on the piece of pottery. It's beautiful. Thanks. And it looks like your composition, the way the shapes are relating to each other is excellent. So do a little bit more. Make the lines a little darker. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah. Next progress and we want to see this again okay All you're right, not you. leaving right say that again uh, what'd you say yeah. you're not leaving yet right you say? not yet but i'll have to leave in in a few minutes you're gonna be not here yet, but i'll have to leave in, in a few minutes oh don't well send me a jpeg i will definitely <laughs> Thanks. I will definitely. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Vanessa. Thanks, love you. Yes, it's great composition. Well done. Thank you. Yeah, Vanessa.
Oh, Pat, Pat, I didn't even know you were here. Did she leave already? Pat was one of the people who said she wasn't coming. Well, she had a contractor. Uh, it looks like she left. 
darn. And I, oh, I know the artist is for next time. I don't know. I love. <laughs> you get to showing off work that she made yesterday at the Northern Carpet Band. We are celebrating Juneteenth with a little bit different African fabric. And one of the choices of projects was to create your own fabric.
By adding a little shadow underneath and behind, possible. If you want your work to look 3D, don't forget about the fact that it's sitting on a flat surface. You want to add the shadow that's underneath or behind. Every three dimensional object has some kind of shadow. What are we doing time-wise? Okay, I think in another few minutes, we're going to start, I'm going to talk about the artist for next class, and then we're going to start sharing. I want to start sharing a little bit earlier today. Um, Oh, Stephanie had to leave. Darn. Sure, you I'll share our artists for next time and then we'll do a little sharing. Those of you who are here in person, we're going to look at your work. Okay, so art artist. 
next leg is drum roll, please. The late great Jean Michel Basquiat. A name familiar to us all. And we have talked about him before. Did I spell it correctly? Probably not. And he is of mixed Caribbean heritage. His mother was Puerto Rican. His father, I believe, was Haitian. So he's got multiple Caribbean heritages. Born in the United States. And I think one of the great geniuses of 20th century art. So we'll be looking at his work. And I think we're going to stick with the skill based kind of activity next week. Although I haven't quite decided yet. So I'm going to keep you on tenter hook. I will send an email uh, over the weekend as usual. Maybe not on Friday night the way I usually do, but over the weekend, I'll let you know more definitely what project we'll be doing next Wednesday. All right, let's start sharing tomorrow. Want to share your drawing with? Everyone, so here's what we have to do. Those of you who are here in class, either I'm going to hold your picture close to the camera, or you have to come up and hold. Which would you prefer, Mark? So everyone, the artist of this piece is tomorrow. Yeah, no, we're in the middle. She's been looking at a shell, punch, a little punch shell. Love it, Tamara. Are you finished, Tamara? Love the shading. Margo is saying she loves your shading. We really believe that there's holes in the top. Well, here's the actual shell. Yeah. Put them side by side. Oh, it's pretty close to the real deal. You did a great job. See how she put the dark shadow underneath? It really makes the drawing pop and right, well done. Keep going. I had a whole bunch of shells. Her style, I love it, is to work very small. Look at the detail in this drawing. It's quite fabulous. And then she had this funny <laughs> sculpture of a creature in a jar next to her shells. I love this drawing. Attention to detail, everybody, really makes a drawing look realistic. I love the darks and lights in your drawing. Teresa, really nice contrast. I would get maybe one suggestion, I would get even a little darker underneath here. Well done. Oh, 
look at this. Drawing of a cat. Oh. Mom says I can make her. Wow. Beautiful. Love the eyes. I love how minimalist it is, but it's so detailed. Matter. <laughs> I love the minimalism, but it's super detailed. Whose was that? Young Teresa. Young Teresa. I love. I love. Okay, so I'm joined by Esty and Charcoal. Nice. Of a glory. Very nice. <laughs> Isn't it a great drawing? Yes. Gorgeous. Yes, love it. Beautiful. Yellow is Esty, the yellow is pastel. Oh. All right. Great attention to detail. Again, that's what makes this drawing so interesting. And she also did where's the lizard? <laughs> is this one finished or is it work? Uh, what? The, the most finished thing will be. She also did, there is a small sculpture of the lizard, the bronze lizard. Ooh, I like his toes. Oh. I like the movement in this drawing, it's great. <laughs> you can yeah. literally feel it crawling across the yeah. page. Who brought a lizard to class? A lizard to class. Well done. She did another. This is a cardboard and a black punch and also in charcoal and pastel. Nice, very nice. Nice, very nice. Love the color. And a little bit of Love the color. It's a really nice drawing. Yeah, the colors are great. So I think it takes a lot of guts to draw in charcoal and yeah. in color, but we haven't been drawing in so long. Well done, Heather. Beautiful. It's a very warm. And I like the white. Did you scratch it out? Look for it. Especially the white yeah. on the top. It's beautiful. Yeah. When do you want me to show? Mika is next. Can I show the drawing too? Mika has done a drawing and paint as well as a preparatory sketch. Ooh, and she has a tiny still life with a little ceramic or wood, I don't remember, a little sculpture of a rooster and some candies. It's really coming along beautifully. Love the colors. The colors are spectacular. She's just starting to add details. We want to see it when it's done, Mika. Yeah. Awesome. Mika. All right, Lily. Lily just grabbed some pencils from her uh, bag. Wow. Lovely. Amazing. Hey, look at the fantastic depth of detail. 
feel. This is what I love about this drawing. It's the way your eye moves back in space, really. And that kind of has a monumental quality to it, almost architectural because of the shading and the perspective. Very strong drawing. Great job, Lily. Thank you. It's, it's interesting how different it looks on the screen. Yeah. It's really weird how it works. Yeah. Seeing it on the screen and then seeing it in real life. <laughs> no, but everybody. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting how a different medium makes you, I don't know, I don't know, maybe this is. And you did this in graphite, right? In your hands. I did it in graphite. See if I can spotlight Vanessa. I wonder if I go like that. There we go. Darn, it's still hard for us to see, Vanessa. Mm -hmm. Oh, she got to go put on more lights. Yeah, that might help. A little bit better. <laughs> oh, yeah, there we go. Excellent. All right, keep getting darker. Wow, this is terrific. Thank you. Good Love stuff. Keep the, going. Objects, the objects are relating to each other and fitting well together. That's great. Thanks. I'm staying light because I'm like, I'm layering all those little leaves. Yeah. <laughs> It's always the way to go. Much easier to hold on your darks than it is to try and erase. Yeah. Excellent. All right, Thank Vanessa. You. Thank you. Anybody else? Robin, do you want to share pen? Uh, can I show you what I did to my drawing from today? From today? Absolutely. Okay, so so it became kind of psychedelic. Somebody mentioned this. So it became kind of psychedelic. Psychedelic. Oh so, yeah. So you told me to put some. Oh yeah, you pulled it all together. And then it became this. I'm going to paint it, but anyway. It, it felt like this pulled it together and this I don't usually like this pulled it together and this I don't usually do, do things like this but when I'm in your class I it always uh brings me into something different and I just let go to whatever it is and it's really to explore it because I wouldn't sit down and paint this I wouldn't think of it you know but, but for your class so thank you so much you're so welcome. It expands your awareness and skills when she yeah. does it. Definitely. Awesome. Margo, let's see those feathers. Thank you, ladies. Margo, where are your feathers? Okay, I'll get them. I'm, I can show you the, also the uh, thing from yesterday, but I can't lift it without disturbing it. But uh, let's see what I can do here. Turn your camera on. I can't find you. Yeah, there I am. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, here you are. Okay, yeah. 
Let's see, can I get it all in? Am I getting it all in now? Keep going. There you go. This is from yesterday. I'm still working on it. I'm uh, gonna do like uh, stripes going different ways in between these um, things when I square them off. Okay. Let's, yeah, all right. And the feathers is underneath that. So I wanna get it. Nice, Margo. Thanks. Okay. All right, here are the feathers. <laughs> If I put them behind there. Right. Oh, Heather, we're going to show that in a minute. Can you see him? Behind my thing. This is just beautiful. I want to call it behind. I just loved it. Yeah. Really beautiful. Yeah. Margo, is it watercolor? Yeah, watercolor. So I'm focusing on that when I'm at home. So I'm focusing on that when I'm at home. Yeah, I like this very much. I mean, it may be finished, or you can do the wash. Thank you, Margaret. You're welcome. Well done. Thank you, Margaret. You're welcome. All right, Heather, bring the elephant close to the screen. And Francine, we're going to come back to you in a second. Heather is going to share something that she didn't get to share. Thank you, Margo. That was awesome. And Francine, you'll be next. OK. So we need to focus on the library screen. Do it. Hold it up, Heather. No, to the laptop. Yeah, that looks so cool. Heather was working on this yesterday. The fabric is African fabric. Up, oh, elephant. <laughs> the elephant went on walkabout. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. Heather, of course, right? Yes. Yeah, the, I don't think the can experience justice, but it's great, Heather. Thank you for sharing. All right, Franz May. Where is Franz May? Oh, yeah, you made a lot of progress. I just tried to call her really fast. <laughs> so you can see better. Yes. Yes. Very cool. And you're you're gonna keep working on it, right? Mm-hmm. I need more in the background. It's gonna make everything come forward. Yeah, really well done. Nice. Send me a JPEG as always, please. And you can always share next class when you're finished. Well done. Thank you. I think that's everyone. Beautiful. Thank you. What a class. You guys are the best. And Jean-Michel Basquiat next week. Keep gathering up little things from around your house that you like. Those of you who are here in person, bring things from home. And I look forward to seeing you all next week for art with Liz. Liz.